morning. And a special good morning uh, to those of you that are joining us uh, online at home on uh, YouTube or Facebook or whatever the platform is that, uh, that you're watching on uh, uh, us uh, today. Uh, and a special good morning for anyone who is here uh, for the first time or is a guest of someone. Um, this is a special place and uh, each Sunday morning we come together uh, to celebrate and worship and reconnect together. Uh, and you are most welcome uh, to, to uh, be here today. Um, my name is, it's funny, you know, this kind of comes in and out. It's very uh, uh, strange to be talking through the microphone. So if, if I pause every once in a while, it's because I don't hear myself all, all, all of a sudden. Um, my name is Trevor Johnson, um, and uh, I'm going to be your worship leader uh, this morning. I have a few announcements here, uh, and I don't, I don't think anybody else has announcements, but if you do have an announcement, this would be a great time to come to the front. Uh, some announcements from the wider church. You may have noticed uh, on the news uh, yesterday that uh, Carmen Lansdowne was acclaimed as the new moderator of the United Church of Canada. Uh, and what's notable about Carmen is that she's the first Indigenous woman uh, to lead a religious denomination in Canada. So congratulations uh, to Carmen. From the wider community, you'll know that today is Pride Sunday, so happy Pride to everyone. Uh, there is a, um, a collection of folks from Musty Knox that will be walking in the Pride March. I see Mike's raising his hand, so I thought maybe with the, with the uh, walking shoes and the t-shirt today that Mike was going to go, but uh, for those of you that are interested, uh, the group is getting together, I believe, at Western Fair about noon, uh, and we'll be walking. It takes about an hour, I say, I'd say, to uh, get down to Victoria Park. And if you can't make the noon start and you're still interested or you want to take part in just a portion of the walk, um, you can join uh, the walk uh, somewhere along Queen Street. They walk from Western Fair down Queen Street to Victoria Park. Uh, and you're all welcome to join. Uh, it's a collection of, I believe, five United Churches here in, in London that are walking together this year. Uh, so there'll be plenty of folks uh, to walk with if you're looking for that. Uh, Dan has asked me to remind folks that this coming Friday uh, in the parking lot is a family campfire. Um, that begins at 7 o'clock. Uh, and just come as you are. Maybe bring a camp chair to sit on, uh, but nothing else uh, is required uh, for you to bring. Uh, there will be s'mores uh, for uh, treats for folks that, uh, that come. And the final announcement is a reminder from Reverend Abiel that uh, each Sunday we are working together as a community uh, to bring a little light into the world. And each Wednesday at 7 o'clock, uh, we've been asked to light a candle wherever we are uh, to bring a little light uh, into the world uh, collectively together uh, to uh, support each other as we move through that uh, period of uh, darkness uh, and into uh, light. And so as we enter into the space of worship, we acknowledge that the lands we're gathered on are the traditional territories of the Haudenosaunee, Lenape, Wap, and Adelaide's peoples. And we are thoughtful of the complicated history and relationships we've had with our Indigenous brothers and sisters. We also light our Christ candle to remind us that when we gather and worship in spirit and in truth, Christ is there with us guiding us and lighting our path. Friends, the light of Christ. Friends, I invite you to take a deep breath, center yourselves, put your feet on the floor, ground yourselves in the love of Christ, prepare to worship. We'll say the call to worship responsibly. We gather to hear what the Holy One will speak. Surely wholeness is at hand for those who stand in awe. Show 
Let steadfast love and faithfulness meet us today. you now to ground yourself in the love of Christ with your feet on the floor and not standing this time as we say our opening prayer together in unison. Living God, we come as your children to be reclaimed and blessed. We need inner strength that comes to us through worship. All week long we have wrestled with emptiness and deceit on every hand. Take away the noisy clamor that would make us captives of human traditions. Turn us toward the source of our salvation, toward your steadfast love and faithfulness. Amen. Good morning, Wesley Knoxettes and Knoxers. First of all, I'd like to share with you the indigenous uh, attributes of the colors. So blue represents calm and peace. Violet reflects sorrow and reflection. Red emanates love and delight. Yellow, wisdom and light. Green, hope and new beginning. This morning, my partner in life and love, EJ, will be sharing in this musical offering. And you have words with you so you can just join in wherever you want, and then you can be ready for Wesley Knox has got talent. Nobody knows about that show yet, okay? <laughs>
do you think you need? What do you think you need to read this? Special glasses. Like maybe a red uh, lens to take some other colors out. So it's easier to see the words on it. So what do you see in this? the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 11 and we read the first 13 verses. He was praying in a certain place and after he finished one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us. And do not bring us to temptation and trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend 
and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I've nothing set before him. And he answered from within, Do not bother me, the door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is in his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if a child asks for a fish, you give a snake instead of fish? Or if a child asks for an egg, you give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Richard, and thank you, Mysteria, for blessing our service this morning. It was wonderful. And thank you for singing for the rainbow. This is special, and I have some beats here, red beats, and Caroline has some green ones. Thank you so much. Now, friends, do you remember Mother Teresa? Mother Teresa traveled a lot. She traveled the whole world. And she traveled in the US. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. This is how she was known. But she was born in Yugoslavia. This is where she grew up. Mother Teresa 
visited one of the evangelists in the US, Robert Schuller. Remember Robert Schuller? Kind of. I didn't like his theology though. And when he visited Robert Schuller, Mother Teresa spent some good time in conversation. And because Robert Schuller likes breaking, said to Mother, Mother Teresa, you know my program is very popular. I broadcast in all America. And I also broadcast in 20 countries in the world. So Mother Teresa, can you tell all the people who view my program something that can help them? Mother Teresa said, yes, tell them to pray and tell them to teach their children to pray. So for Mother Teresa, prayer is very important. We connect with Christ before we can truly connect with our neighbor. So prayer is very important. When Jesus had finished praying, one of the disciples came to him and said, teach us to pray. Teach us. Because they looked at him, they saw him pray all the time. Teach us to pray. And Jesus began to teach them. And he said to them, if you pray, say, Abba, Father, hallowed be your name. We begin by acknowledging God. For you see, prayer is not for God's benefit, but ours. We need to know whom, to whom we are making our petitions. We need to know what is God's nature. Father, Abba, that pretty well sums up it up. God is our loving parent, and yet God is small. Hallowed, holy, revered, awe-inspiring be thy name. God is the source of our lives. God is our ever-living hope. Without God, would not even exist. This morning, I'm reminded about one of the American presidents, Dwight Eisenhower. When he was inaugurated as president in the Union, he kind of shocked the country and shocked the world by asking to say a prayer to God. Because you see, Dwight Eisenhower believed that he has no power without the power of God. So he prayed ask for prayer, ask that God to strengthen his leadership. You know, when we were inaugurated in January of 1953, he had led three million troops to Normandy. He had stopped the Second World War. He was a powerful person, and he was appointed to a powerful position. But that position didn't mean anything to Eisenhower. 
if prayer was not involved. So he prayed. He asked God for power and strength. Then Jesus continued teaching. He said, when you pray, you say, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done. So Luke only says, thy kingdom come. But to Matthew adds and say, thy will be done. This is what Jesus taught the disciples. We pray about the kingdom of God. In this congregation, I've spoken much about the kingdom of God. I've spoken much about how Jesus has passion for the kingdom. I've spoken about Jesus saying, the kingdom of God is near, has come. Jesus saying to people who listen to him, the kingdom of God is in your heart. He had a passion for the kingdom. So when he says to his disciples, when you pray and say, thy kingdom come, he really means business. He really means something that is very special. Because for Christ, the kingdom is special. Very special. He had a passion for the kingdom. And I have a passion for the kingdom. Then he continued and said to his disciples again, Give us our daily bread. Give us our daily bread. Which means Jesus was saying to his disciples, you need to pray daily to ask for daily bread. You need to do it every day to ask for the bread. You can't ask for the bread once but you need to do it every day. So we need to be thankful about what God is going to do. When I was a Methodist minister, I served in a circuit. And sometimes a circuit had 38 societies. Now 38 societies, societies are small little churches. And the numbers in the society could range from 50 to 100. And I had to divide communion in quarterly. So I had to divide the 38 congregations so that each one of them could receive communion once a quarter. Sometimes, Caroline and I would begin the service at 7 p.m and baptize at 7 p.m. and have communion at 7 p.m. Then we stay in that church till morning because at 8 o'clock I have to go to another church and at 11 o'clock I had to go to another church and at 1 o'clock we had to go to another church. Then one day someone asked me, how do you manage? How do you manage to preach and teach and give communion to so many churches on a Sunday morning, beginning Saturday evening? I said to that person, because I've kept my prayer life daily. So I do not face life alone. Friends, I have kept my prayer life daily. I have kept my prayer life daily. The work at Wesley Knox, I pray daily for the work at Wesley Knox. 
so that I should not be alone. I should have someone support me. God supports us if we ask him. This is why Jesus says to his disciples, ask and it shall be given to you. Whatever you ask, God will give you. And when I ask God for Wesley Knox, I say, God, please help us, support us. And this is why, friends, I've asked this congregation to light a candle at 7 o'clock on Wednesday as a way of asking for the light to come to us and all the frustrations to go so that we should not be alone. Then Jesus continues and says, when you pray, say, forgive us our sins. He adds a new dynamic, the dynamic of forgiveness. Forgive us our sins so that we can be able to forgive others their sins. This is what Christ is saying to us, forgive us. Forgiveness is a gem. I've learned that forgiveness is a gem. You heard this story before. 1969, I was detained and beaten severely. And I looked at the batches of the policemen who was beating me up. I memorized the number. And one day, out of the blue, I met one of these policemen when I was a Methodist minister. And I looked at him and I said, is your number this? He said, yes. I said, do you remember what you did to me? He said, I don't remember. You got the wrong guy. You know what I said to him? I said, I forgive you for what you have done for me. For what you have done to me, I forgive you. Friends, forgiveness is power. We need to forgive people who stress us, who frustrate us. We need to forgive them. I forgave my aunt who was very cruel to us because my father died when I was four years. I had no one and we lived in his house. She fed us one day meal. For those who know soft porridge, this is what she fed us. And she fed her children meat and rice and vegetables. But us, who didn't have parents, she fed soft porridge. I grew up very angry. But when I accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, I forgave her. You know what it did to me? It freed my heart. Sometimes when you carry burdens, your heart is heavy. You don't know what to do. But if you forgive, you get freedom. You get free. And this is why Mother Teresa is saying to us this morning, teach them to pray. And let them teach their children to pray. Because Mother Teresa understands that prayer is powerful. Teach us to pray. This is what the disciple was saying to Christ. And Jesus taught them how to pray. When you pray, you must say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. And lead us not into temptation. This is what Christ is saying to us this morning, Wesley Knox. 
teach us to pray. And teach their children to pray. Our Lord has given us a model. Pray that God's kingdom will come to this world. God's kingdom is, is peaceful. God's kingdom is inclusive. God's kingdom welcomes everybody. God's kingdom doesn't discriminate. It loves you as you are. Pray that God's kingdom will come to this world. Give God thanks for daily bread. Ask his forgiveness, even as you forgive others. And friends, pray daily for his guidance. I do that every day. And I'm not alone because he's always with me. In life, in death, in life, we're not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. this morning. This note is very important. 
Today, the arrival of the Pope to start a journey of reconciliation with Canada's indigenous people, showing to all the Church what can be done for peace. We are grateful that the Pope is coming. We are also grateful that he is going to be working towards reconciliation and making peace. We are also grateful that the United Church of Canada appointed the first First Nations person as moderator of the first woman as moderator of the church. We are very grateful for that. On a personal note, I am grateful that things are beginning to come down in our church. Things are beginning to move in the right direction particularly when it comes to the call of the minister who was supposed to come here. Things are moving in the right direction, the direction that I like. I'm so grateful that at least for once someone is listening to us and someone is hearing our pain and our anger and our frustration and things are working up right. I'm so grateful and I want to thank God for that. Now at this time, can we bring our offerings, please? Holy God, whose name is before all names, we worship you with our offerings. They represent our labor, our investments of time and energy. Through our offerings, loving God, we proclaim Christ to the world. Bless and multiply our effort. Amen. Let us say a prayer for the people. Dear God, thank you for this amazing space of Wesley Knox where we can worship and praise you and glorify your name. Thank you for the amazing people that we have brought to Wesley Knox to worship. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. God, we are praying for your courage, for you to give us the will, give us the heart, give us the mind, give us the spirit to draw closer to you. And by drawing closer to you, drawing closer to your people, your people who are suffering and struggling, your people who are incarcerated, your people who are hungry and naked, your people who need us to be near them, to show them your grace and mercy. Holy One, teach us to go to difficult places and say, I am here. Teach us what it means to change narratives. Teach us what it means to be hopeful. Teach us what it means to be uncomfortable things in your service. God, we bless you for the opportunity and privilege of being able to represent you on this earth. Empower us to represent your grace, your mercy, your calling for redemption and transformation. We ask that you give us all the blessings that we need to do these works, to live in this life. And we pray all these things in your name. Amen.
Friends, may the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.